So in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to create sliced text, just like what you see right here in these two different examples. It's actually really easy to do once you know what you're doing. So let's just jump into it and make it happen. So first up here, just to get a starting point, the font I used in these particular examples is called, if I highlight this, it's called Elsie. And Elsie is a totally free font so if you want to use the same font, you can go to the description where I'll place a link to download it. You can go ahead and pause the video, download the font, install it, and then come back here, and then you should be ready to go. But it doesn't matter what font you use. You can even use this on different objects or illustrations you've made if that's something you want to do. So all of that doesn't really matter. So anyways, what you want to do is just write out something or have your object ready that you want to slice. And once you have that done, we can get on to the next step here. So once you have your text ready to go, if you're using text, what you're gonna wanna do is outline it before we go ahead and do this, it'll have to be outlined. You might wanna just hold down Alt or Option on a Mac and then click, hold, and drag it somewhere else to duplicate the live version before you outline it, just so you have a copy of it somewhere in case you ever wanna go back and make changes later, that might save you some trouble. But once you've done that or you're ready to go, just select the text with the direct selection tool, which is the black arrow in your toolbar, right click on the text, and from this menu that appears, you wanna create outlines. So just right click the text and then go to create outlines. And once that's done, what you're gonna to wanna to do is hit the backslash button on your keyboard or go over here to your toolbar where you can select the line segment tool it looks like a line going up and to the right. Once again, it's backslash on your keyboard. So just select that. And once you've selected that, you can go ahead and just draw a line. And you can just basically click, hold, and drag on your screen to draw this line. But what I'm going to suggest that you do is you hold down shift when you do it, which will make it be either perfectly vertical, perfectly horizontal, or at a 45 degree angle. So I'm going to make mine at a 45 degree angle. I'm just holding shift as I do this, and then I'm going to let go. So this draws a line. And the reason why I think a 45 degree angle makes it the easiest is in a few later steps, it's really nice to have something on a perfect 45 degree angle. So if you wanna enlarge or make this line smaller in the future, you can just keep on doing that on that 45 degree angle. It makes it much faster and easier to do that. But of course you can use any angle that you want. But as you can see, this doesn't have a stroke applied right here in my toolbar. The fill is the one that is a big solid box and the stroke is the one that has a square missing in the middle. So you just wanna double click on that stroke and then select a color for that stroke. I'm gonna make this black, which has a hex code of all zeros, six different zeros. So select whatever color you want this stroked line to be and then hit okay. And also you can use any color you want. If you wanna use something like a bright cyan blue, just so you can see how it overlaps the black text really easily, that's actually something that I do all the time. So feel free to just select whatever color you want, hit okay. And then as you can see right here, this line is now that color. So you just wanna use the selection tool, which is a black arrow and kind of click, hold, and drag this line along the text until you think it's chopping the text up in a way that looks interesting to you. So as you can see in the examples right here, this is sort of what I did. I actually kind of have a running little history of what I did. So this was my main text that I used. This is where I drew that line cutting through my type. And this is what happened after I actually made that cut happen. And then at the end here, I kind of arranged it in two different ways, kind of in a stylized manner to make it look a little bit more cool. But the way you place the line and where you place the line is totally up to you. It might be helpful to you to have your stroke window available, which is right here on my screen. I just dragged it on here. To get the stroke window on your screen, if you don't have it, you can go to window and then sort near the bottom. It is stroke. Everything in this window is alphabetical. So just look for stroke as it will appear and make sure that this window is opened. So that way when you use your black arrow or selection tool and you highlight over this stroke, you can change the weight to be bigger or smaller to make this a little bit more visible or not quite as visible, depending on what works best for you and making sure that you can see that line really clearly when you're working. But once you have this line arranged on your text in a way that you think looks good, I might suggest just selecting over everything by clicking, holding that click and then dragging over this entire object that you've created. And then once again, if you wanna duplicate this, just so you can have sort of a working copy, it might be helpful for you to do that. To do that, just hold down Alt on a PC or Option on a Mac, click, hold, and drag this down a little bit so that it's in its own spot. And then you have a duplicated version right here. So here is our duplicated version. And what I'm gonna suggest you do next is highlight over just the stroked line that we created, and then hit Control C on a PC or Command C on a Mac, which will copy it to the clipboard. And I'll show you why I did that in just a second here. 
But next up, what we're going to want to do is make sure we have our Pathfinder window open. To get the Pathfinder window open, just go to Window, and then sort of near the bottom, we have Pathfinder. And the Pathfinder window is going to be super useful here, so we can kind of see different options for splitting up this text. This is what ultimately saves a bunch of time. So what you want to do next is use that black arrow or selection tool. Select over everything right here so that both the text and your line to divide it is also selected. And from the Pathfinder window, we want to go to Pathfinders. It's the options on the bottom row here. And the one on the furthest left is called Divide. We want to click that just one time, which will divide the type by the line that is in front of it. So just make sure you have this selected, that your line is in front of your text, and then hit the divide button in your Pathfinder window. And once you do that, now if I zoom in on the text here so we can see this a little bit better, you can see there's a light blue line. It might be really small on your screen, but this is where it went ahead and divided the type. So while the text is still selected here, I'm going to right click it and then ungroup it. And what that does is just makes it so each of these different divided segments is on its own little thing. So as you can see right here, it cut the M right there and it cut the B on this little top part right here. So that right there, we went ahead and cut the type really fast and easy to do that. And the reason why I had you hit control C over this line is now you can hit control F on your computer or command F on a Mac, which will paste that line back in place. And I did that essentially so that if you wanted to do a stylized version, just like this one right here, this line is already in place and kind of ready to go. So by hitting that control F or command F on a Mac, it pasted what you had copied just where you left it off. So now is the kind of fun part where all we have to really do is just arrange this in a way that looks good to us. So I'm just going to select this line and then this top segment and I'm holding shift as I click these multiple things so that it can select multiple things at once. Holding shift is just an easy way of doing that. I'm going to drag this up over here just a little bit and let it go. I'm going to hit control F on a PC or command F on a Mac again to paste this line in place once again for this bottom section. So both of these are kind of lined up now. I'm also going to highlight over both of these line segments. I'm going to change the color to black instead of this cyan blue because I now want it to go ahead and match the text here. So I'm going to double click on my toolbar in the stroke window, which will bring up the color picker. I'm just going to move it to the bottom here so it is all black and then hit OK. Feel free to make this whatever color you want. And if you don't want to use these kind of stylized looking lines, you of course don't have to. You can also select both the lines and then once again go to your stroke window, which is right here on my screen, and change the size of these lines to be bigger or smaller, kind of depending on how you want them to look in comparison to your text. With this example right here, it looks like three point is working well for me, but depending on how big your type is, that number might be different for you. So what I did on the type over here, if I look at this really quick, is I actually just selected both these top points and deleted them, the smaller points. So this little top section of the B right here, I just click on that using the selection tool, which is the black arrow, and then hit the delete button to remove it. And I'll do the same thing to this little leg on the M, just clicking on that and deleting it to make this kind of stylized look happen. And then you can just highlight over the areas you want to move and kind of arrange these in a way that you think looks visually pleasing to you essentially. So on this one, I have this vertical line going down into the left here on the B and on the M, that line is going up into the right. So I'll just quickly go ahead and make that change. This time what you want to do is hit A on your keyboard to select the direct selection tool, which is the white arrow in your toolbar and the difference between the white arrow and the black arrow is the white arrow can select a single point on an item as opposed to that entire line. So if you click on the very endpoint anchor of this line, for example, you can then drag this line as you want to to move just that. So if I do that really quick, you can see that the top point of the line stayed in the same spot, but the bottom point was what was moved. And the reason why I thought it would be helpful for you to hold shift when you drew this line, so it would be a perfect 45 degree angle, is that on this step, you can do the same thing when you select the point. And also an easier way to select a point if you don't know exactly where it is because you can't see it, you can just use that white arrow and kind of draw a little box where that point would be. And then it should highlight that point on your screen as like a little blue dot. And then you just click hold and drag this up. But this time as I drag this up, I'm going to hold shift on my computer so it stays on this 45 degree angle. And I'm going to move this line until it basically ends up on the end of this M point right here. And then I'm going to do the same thing for the B, except I'm going to grab this point at the top of the B. I'm going to get that point selected with the direct selection tool, click, hold, and drag it down while holding shift and kind of get it to the top point of this B. 
So if I zoom in a little bit closer by hitting Control plus on a PC or Command plus on a Mac, you can see that these don't line up really great. There's a few different ways you can go ahead and make these appear to be more lined up. You can use the selection tool and then click on this line. And once you click on it, you can use your keyboard arrow keys to kind of nudge it back and forth until it gets looking a little bit better to you. You might want to zoom in even more so you can really see what you're doing here. You can also just click, hold and drag this line and kind of nudge it softly until it appears to line up pretty well. Alternatively, and this might be a little bit easier, if you highlight over one of these lines, and while that line is selected and highlighted, you want to go to Object, and then you want to go to Expand. And from the Expand menu, you just want to make sure that Expand Stroke is selected. And if that is selected, you can go ahead and hit OK. And what that'll do is it'll convert this formally stroked line into an object. So it's going to treat it like a solid object, like a box, instead of like a stroked line. And then if I want to, I can go ahead and zoom in here on this point, use the white arrow on what used to be the stroke, but right now it is a box. So you can just grab the point of the box right here that you want to move, and you can kind of nudge that until it seems to fit the characteristics of the letter a little bit better. So right there, I just did some quick moves using that direct selection tool or the arrow, and I made it fit the lines of this M a lot better than it did previously. So if I wanted to do that on this B as well, so where is this box right here? It's kind of hard to see when things are overlapping in a strange way. It actually looks like the B letter is placed on top of this line. If you ever want to arrange the way things are ordered so you can select things a little bit better, you can just go ahead and click on that element, right click, go to arrange. So once again, just click on the element so it's selected, right click it, go to arrange, and then you can either bring it to front or send it to back to make it on the very top or the very bottom using the control brackets. As you can see in these little shortcuts is a faster way of doing that too, but you can do that however you want. But this line actually hasn't been outlined yet, so we want to go ahead and do that as well. So with this stroked line selected, I'm going to go to Object, Expand, and then make sure Stroke is selected, and then expand that stroke. So now we have an actual box here as opposed to a stroked line. So if I go back up to the top here, this one was actually pretty good. I don't know why this is zooming all crazy like that. But anyways, if I go back up here, we can see this one actually looked pretty darn close as it was, but I can just grab this point really quick and then make it match that anchor point so it's an actual perfect connection, which it was not before. And then of course, if you want to continue moving these lines after you've expanded the stroke, you can of course do that. Just highlight over both of those points with the direct selection tool so that both points are selected. And then click, hold, and drag. Whoops, I might want to zoom in a little bit so it doesn't try to do some other weird stuff. Click, hold, and drag on those points, then just make sure you hold shift as you do that. So you can still do this just the exact same way using the direct selection tool after you've expanded it. It's just you want to make sure you have every point that you want to move selected when you do that. But as you can see here, that was pretty quick to do and it kind of replicated what I had done previously here. So that's just a quick example of how easy it is to chop things up in Illustrator, slice them up and make them look a little bit cooler, a little bit more stylized if that is a look that you're going for. That is it for this video. If you found it helpful, please hit the thumbs up button. It lets me know I did a good job. And also feel free to leave a comment about what you thought about the video. If you have any questions you want to ask or if you want to see other different topics in the future, you can feel free to leave your video suggestions in the comment section. And if you want to see more videos like this, please subscribe. I do my best to keep creating new content just like this for designers. Thanks so much for watching.